This is the famous Mars chord by Gustav Holst. Welcome to an interplanetary edition of Keith Horn's Chord of the Week. Gustav Holst composed the planets from 1914 to 1917, and it became one of the most influential pieces of music for film composers of the 20th century. Mars is the most famous movement of the piece, and it was the first thing Holst composed for the planets. The subtitle is The Bringer of War, and it has been associated with the sound of brutality, violence, and warfare. Holst wrote the planets during World War I, and it premiered just a couple months before the end of the war. A positive review in the Sunday Times by famed British music critic Ernest Newman, coupled with the emboldened post-war Brits, may have led to the increased popularity of the planets. Not to mention how the middle section of Jupiter was later set to poetry in 1921 to become the British hymn, I Vow to Thee, My Country. But back to the Mars Court. One more time. All together now. These are the notes of the chord. It's really just four pitches. C, G, A flat, D flat, and the rest are doublings. It's a little hard to label it, and it's kind of pointless, but just to remember it, you could think of it as a C-fifth and a D-flat-fifth, but you invert the D-flat-fifth to a fourth. That's pretty much the whole chord. But the full voicing just doubles this again, and has a G on the top. What's up, G? One of the most famous examples of recycling the Mars chord is from the opening scene of the very first Star Wars film, A New Hope. Here's that scene. John Williams is using a facsimile of the Mars chord, but it's not exactly the same. He adds an F. If we take the Mars chord and add an F right here, that's what John Williams does, and it gives us a Phrygian chord. More on that later in another video. But it seems most likely that Mars was used as the temp music in this opening scene. Also, look at the color of that planet. I'm just saying, like, the same color. Just saying, I'm just saying. Here's another example of a Mars infused chord from my favorite Rocky film, Rocky IV. That's right, I said it. It's my favorite. With an iconic score by the great Vince DiCola. Hey, good. In this scene, Rocky's attempting to knock out Ivan Drago in the final round after an emotional journey to get to Russia to fight him. DiCola uses a version of the Mars chord at the emotional climax of the film to great effect. <laughs> He uses a Mars-ish chord to prep a D-flat major. And I know that Vince is a very big fan of the Emerson, Lake, and Powell album in which they do a synth rock version of Mars. So I'm sure he was influenced by that. But... Bill Conti's score to Rocky III also uses the Mars chord in this moment when it seems like Rocky is about to be knocked out by Clubber Lang. In all fairness to Mr. T, he's not really that bad of a guy. I mean, I mean, he's the one who encouraged us to treat our mothers better in the 1980s. Mother, there is no other like mother. So treat her right. That's good advice. Where was I? All oh, right, the Mars chord. 
Suffice it to say, this chord has been used as the sound of violence, brutality, and warfare for a long time. Now, I'm not using these examples to call out plagiarism, even though it is, but just to illustrate how influential Mars has been for film composers, and to give a few examples of how this chord has been used effectively. So let's run it through some exercises. The first exercise is to plane the chord in the condensed version with just the four notes. And we'll plane it through the plagal cycle, so ascending fifths or descending fourths, like this. The next exercise is to arpeggiate it, like that, and I'll take it through the ascending diminished cycle, which is this. It's another way to get through all 12 key centers without using the circle of fifths. Lever. So that would sound like this. And finally, I'll try to use it functionally by using it in the same way that Vince Tocola did, by taking our chord like this, opening it up as a sort of Lydian resolution, but I'll throw it, here's in D-flat, over its own seventh. So we still get that Mars kind of Phrygian-ish sound. Uh, this one's a little harder for me, but I'll, I'll try it anyway. So here we go. So that's a few ways to practice the sound of war, the Mars chord. So thanks for watching, thanks for listening, and if you have any suggestions for other chords that you'd like me to talk about, just leave them in the comments. Happy practicing. Yeah. Who did? This beat. Yo, who did? Yo, who did? Who did?